The year is 2017 and Playboy Cardi would release his highly anticipated debut mixtape self-titled in April of that year. This mixtape would peak at number 12 on the Billboard 200 charts with sales of 28,000 copies in its first week. Prior to the mixtape, Cardi built up a lot of buzz from his presence in the SoundCloud rap scene with classics such as Fetty, Broke Boy, and The Omen. With the release of Self Titled, Cardi proved that he could take the hype that he had accumulated while he was in the underground to mainstream success with his singles such as Woke Up Like This featuring Lil Uzi and Magnolia. Woke Up Like This will peak at number 76 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and Magnolia will peak at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Both Woke Up Like This and Magnolia would go multi-platinum and self-title itself went gold in January of 2018, less than a year after its release. The mixtape would finally go platinum in February of 2020. Cardi was looking like he could be one of the new rising stars in rap and in June of 2017, this certainly seemed like it could be so with the unveiling of the 2017 XXL freshman list. For those who don't know what this list is, essentially every Every year, the XXL magazine picks a number of artists who they think will be the new leaders. On the 2017 cover, you had artists like XXXTentacion, RIP, Kamaya, A Boogie, PNB Rock, Cardi, Amine, Cap G, Made in Tokyo, Ugly God, and Kyle. At the time of the release of this list, I wasn't a huge fan of Cardi just yet, but I do remember people were trashing his freestyle, both in the cypher and his solo one. To me, this was the last solid XXL class, because after this, the XXL freshman list fell off a cliff in my opinion. But before I get more into the video, I would quickly like to plug that I just made a TikTok, so you guys should go follow and support. I'll be posting content on there. I'm trying to get that popping so definitely go out and support that and if you guys haven't already done it yet go follow my instagram too that would be greatly appreciated you guys can always just reach out and just show me some love it's all good but earlier i mentioned lil uzi vert who cardi frequently collabed with around this time whether it was on his lead single for self-titled which was looking left right woke up like this or on uzi's song of course we ghetto flowers at this time cardi and uzi were really close and recorded a lot of songs together. In September of 2017, Playboy Cardi posted a picture on his Snapchat with the caption, Cardi Uzi Tape, Uzi Cardi Tape 1629. Why the title 1629 is significant is because those numbers represent the blocks that Uzi and Cardi rep. Lil Uzi Vert represents the 1600 block of Philly, while Cardi reps the 2900 block of Atlanta. At this time, Lil Uzi Vert just released his debut album Love Is Rage 2 in August of that year. Cardi made that post a month later in September. Love Is Rage 2 would be led by the monster hit single EXO Tour Life, which peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100, and as of today, it is 11 times platinum. This song would take Uzi's career to a whole other level in the mainstream. Both Cardi and Uzi dropping their respective projects in 2017 really set the scene for the release of 1629, but plans would soon change. A couple of months after Love Is Rage 2 dropped, the 1629 tour would be announced with the set to start in November of 2017. Sally, though, just as soon as the tour got announced, it would be canceled with Uzi going on Twitter saying that he wasn't going to go on the tour with Cardi and instead he needed to focus. Now, I've extensively talked about this project in my video about rap projects that were never released. If you would
would like to learn more about this project, I highly suggest that you go watch that video. I'll even put a link in the description. But things with 1629 just kind of fell apart. Uzi and Cardi kind of drifted away from each other over the years and weren't as close as they once were during this era. In 2018, Cardi would do an interview and say that him and Uzi had been recording together since dating back to 2015. He additionally said that by 2018, they had around 100 tracks together. And also, I might add that quite a few tracks that were intended for 1629 would be leaked online throughout the years. If you're a fan of Playboy Cardi and or Uzi, you would probably already know how frequently their music gets leaked. Probably the most popular leak from this project is Break the Bank. Break the bank. I'm a break the bank. Diamond wet like. Oh. But back to Die Lit, and one of the first times that we got confirmation that Cardi was working on a solo follow up to Self Titled was in December of 2017 when a video was released showing Playboy Cardi behind a mixing board with the caption Album Mode. It wouldn't be until March of 2018 that we got more information regarding this follow up project. Pierre Bourne, who produced six out of the 15 tracks on Self Titled, would post on Twitter that the album Die Lit was indeed finished. He also said that somebody from the label, which probably was from Interscope, wanted him to tweet that the album was done. Speaking of Pierre, he ended up producing 15 out of the 19 tracks on Die Lit. The production on this album is highly praised and I feel like production wise, this is Cardi's best album, but I feel like I mainly feel like that because I'm a fan of one producer kind of producing most of, if not all of a project. Sadly though, this was the last time that Pierre was heavily involved in a Cardi album, but that's a story that I can tell if you guys would like me to, if you guys want me to remake my whole lot of red video. I did that video a while back and took it down since I didn't really like it, but I can definitely remake it if there's some interest behind it, so leave a comment if you would like to see that. But though it was good news to the fans that an album was coming, Cardi's team would soon have a problem on their hands. The song Love Hurts featuring Travis Scott will fully leak online in early May of 2018, which resulted in Cardi being forced to officially drop it the next day with an updated mix. Prior to being leaked and officially releasing, the song had been teased for a while with there being evidence of Travis Scott posting a video of himself singing the song in August of 2017. Cardi would tease the song himself in early 2018 and other snippets began to surface before it finally leaked in full. From this song, people knew that we were getting a new Cardi on Die Lit because this is where Cardi really ramped up him talking about being a rock star. And also on Die Lit, we saw Cardi really position his music to that punk aesthetic, which sounded completely different from how self-titled sounded. In my opinion, the Die Lit and Version 1 era of Whole of Red are my favorite eras of Cardi musically. Most people can just chalk that up to nostalgia, with that being more so targeted toward the Whole of Red Version 1 era, but I feel like musically, Cardi was at his peak in these two eras. I still like his new music a lot, but I really feel like he was on another level during these times. But Die Lit would officially release in May of 2018, with the album peaking at number 3 on the Billboard 200 charts, selling 61,000 copies in its first week. This would be a 33,000 copy increase compared to self-titled. The album would release to mixed reviews from fans and critics. There were people who praised the simplicity, production, and progression musically for Cardi, while others felt like the album lacked substance, needed more variety, and was kind of boring. That might have been the sentiment at the time, but this album really grew to be one of the most influential projects of the newer generation, definitely one of the most influential projects of the last 5-6 years. An influence that's been documented both in the underground and in the mainstream. The impact that this album had and still has to this day is crazy. I remember when this album first came out and I only really liked two tracks, but when I revisited the album in 2019, I really fell in love with it and just understood it fully at that time. But some things from the Dilate era that I want to talk about are the leaks. The big leaks from this era are Cake, Let Em In, Cashin, 
check please, no lie, supersonic, run it up, 007, etc. My favorite out of these happen to be check please. One of the things that I think really makes this album stand out is its cover art. It definitely grabs your attention immediately. I never knew the story behind the cover art. Now there's been some speculation about where the inspiration for the cover art directly came from. What we do know is that in 2018, Complex would interview the photographer for the cover, which is a person by the name of Nick Hunter. When questioned about the album cover, Nick Hunter would say that the concept of the cover was based around a reference photo of an old punk rock show that was found by Shane Gonzalez, who is the founder and artistic director of Midnight Studios. So with this, the cover was very much punk inspired and punk music was played very loudly during the photo shoot for Dilit. One thing that always stood out to me about the cover art outside of Cardi hurling himself into the air is the black girl with the big mohawk. While doing research for this video, I came across the woman's TikTok and her name is Felicia Lester. She would confirm that it was her on the cover and would talk about her experience at the photo shoot for Dilit. One thing that fans always question her about is what color shoes was Cardi wearing. I've seen colorized edited photos for Dilit and his shoes appear to be black and gray, but I don't think that that's right. Mainly because in the colorized photos for Dilit, Felicia's hair is blonde or green, which is inaccurate because she would reveal that her hair was pink when she did the cover. Nonetheless, Felicia would also say that she didn't even know the answer to that question because Playboy Cardi was not at the photo shoot. With this, she would also reveal that he was edited in later. She had no clue that what she was doing was for an album cover. Felicia thought that she was doing a punk rock photo shoot for something. It wouldn't be until later on when she found out what the shoot was actually for. To wrap off the first part of the video, I would like to thank you guys for watching the video this far in. If you like the content, you should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. In the second part of the video, I will be breaking down every song on the album and telling the history behind them. The album starts off with Long Time Intro, which is a song about how Cardi came up and how he feels to be in his position because he originally had nothing. To me, this is one of the greatest intro tracks on an album that I've ever ever heard. It really sets the tone for the album and the beat that Art Dealer did for this song is heavenly. Every time I see his name on a Cardi song, I instantly know it's going to be fire, just like every time I see Pierre's name. It's long been a rumor that Long Time was originally going to be the outro to Dilit, while the leak Check Please was rumored to be the intro. Honestly, I would have preferred this with Long Time being an outro after the song Top or replacing Top altogether preferably the latter. Sorry to people who like that song, I'm just not a real big fan of the song Top. I think that it should be noted that Cardi would perform an alternate version of Long Time during a set at Rolling Loud Bay Area in 2019. The outro to the song is different, but I much prefer the version that we have today. After Long Time, we have R.I.P. and this is where we can see a drastic change in Cardi musically. The track has a booming instrumental produced by Pierre Bourne and we can really see the punk influence from Cardi in the song and in the music video for the song as well. Notably, there are multiple versions of the song. One of the OG versions of the song contains a different instrumental than what we have today. <laughs> Next track would be Lean For Real, which features UK artist Skepta, who to me is super fire. My second favorite UK artist behind Lancy Foe. This song did have a music video that was made for it that went unreleased for years until it was leaked in 2021. The only other thing that I could find about the song was some information from the Playboy Cardi tracker. An early snippet of the song with the producer of the song Indigo Child Rock doing a reference would surface online. The other version of the song with the OG mix is said to be a rougher mix with different claps and extra ad-libs. 
although this is the first time that Playboy Cardi and Skepta would officially release a song together that would make a song with each other in 2015 called Tryna Be Me that went unreleased. The fourth song on the album is Old Money. Some history behind this track is that it uses the same beat as Pierre's song Congratulations that was teased all the way back in 2017. This song would end up leaking and we got to hear what Pierre Bourne sounded like over the beat. I think Old Money is a cool song off of Dilet, but I think if Pierre's verse from Congratulations was added to the final song, I think that the song would be way better. Pierre did end up featuring on a song on the album which we'll talk about shortly. Love Hurts would come after Old Money and I briefly talked about this track in the first part of the video. This track has a couple of different versions but I did manage to come across a video of what the OG beat for the song sounded like. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments. I prefer the beat that we have today, but it's still interesting to hear the progression from what we just heard to the track that we have today. According to the file name of the leak, the song was originally titled Rockstar. Shooter would be the sixth song on Die Lit and would feature none other than Lil Uzi Vert. This song has grown to be one of the most popular songs off of the album by far with nearly 600 million streams on Spotify alone. What some people might not know about the song is that it was nearly made almost a year before Die Lit. Shooter was recorded in July 2017 with Cardi sharing a video of him and Uzi in the studio. A rough demo of the track was leaked in May 2018 with an extra Uzi verse but when the song was officially released Uzi's second verse was changed to a verse by Playboy Cardi himself. The OG version of the song with Uzi having two verses is referred to as Rocket. Right Now would follow up after Shooter and this would feature Pierre Bourne. There's not much history I could really find about this song of note so we'll just keep it moving to the next track which is Poke It Out. This song would feature Nicki Minaj and there's a version of this song that would leak after the album's release. I believe that it's a line from Nicki Minaj where she says that she's the best feature of the Big Apple since FaceTime. Off of this line alone, she says that she's top 5 of all time. A lot of Playboy Cardi fans don't really like her verse on the song, with there being versions of the song with her verse being removed floating around, especially on YouTube. I personally don't like the beginning of her verse, but I don't mind the rest of it. The KOD in the title of the song is most likely in reference to King of Diamonds, which is a strip club in Miami, Florida. There are some people who think that this song is about Black China, with her and Cardi being linked in the past. Black China also has a link with King of Diamonds with her working there at a point in time. Like I said, this song is said to be about her, but there has never been no official confirmation and this is only mere speculation. Uzi was originally a feature on the song at a point in time before his verse would ultimately be scrapped on the final version of the song. Once again, I prefer this version because it adds a little more to the song than what we ended up getting on the album. Fell in Love featuring Bryson Tiller would end up being the 10th track on Die Lit. This is the first and only time to date that Playboy Cardi and Bryson Tiller have collaborated together despite the two being friends for years. Bryson has even brought out Cardi on stage before to perform. The interesting thing about this song is that there are different versions of this song that leaked after Die Lit was released. The different versions of this song have names such as Tanya and different lifestyles. It's the same beat but with no Bryson Tiller and different Cardi verses. I'm glad that we got the version that we got today because Bryson was truly a great addition to the song. The song Foreign is next up and this song would be previewed before the release of Die Lit and would ultimately leak. Pierre would originally feature on the OG version of the track. This is a time where I feel like the version that we ended up getting on the album is better. 
With that being said, I think that hopefully by now people have came across to Pierre Bourne being a rapper. There are a lot of people that don't even know that he raps and just think that he just produces. Some people might be wondering why Pierre Bourne is on a lot of the original songs on the beats that he produces and the reason why is because he originally raps over the beats for himself. He raps over his beat but if he previews a beat for an artist and they really like it then he gives it to them. Two examples of this would be the Takashi 6 9 song Gummo and the Chavo song Convinced. Pierre Bourne has a very popular unreleased song called Mystery Machine and he ended up giving the beat for this song to Chavo who he frequently produces for most likely because Chavo liked the beat. In the 6 9 case that's a long story because Pierre did not give the beat to 6 9 but I bring up Gummo because Pierre initially recorded himself over the beat before giving it to Trippy Red and a bunch of problems happened afterward. The song Pull Up would end up being the 12th track off of Dilit and this is another old song like Shooter when it comes to Dilit. Pull Up was first previewed on May 13th of 2017 which was two days shy of a year before Dilit came out since Dilit dropped on May 11th of 2018. So that's how old Pull Up is and back in 2017 Cardi would perform the song briefly at some shows. I saw a video where Cardi performed the song before its official release and the crowd was absolutely dead. Things would drastically change a year later when Cardi performed Pull Up at shows. Mileage featuring Chief Keef would be the next song and Chief Keef would be a huge inspiration to Cardi. Nothing really much about this song but fans would get confirmation that Chief Keef and Cardi were working together during the dialogue sessions with Chief Keef posting footage of the two together in January of 2018 on his Instagram story. One of the most important songs on Dilit happens to be Flatbed Freestyle. The reason why is because this song would really be a glimpse into what we would see in the future from Playboy Cardi. This song is seen by fans as the first real instance that we have of Cardi using his baby voice on a song. From what I'm seeing, upon the release of this song, it was met with mixed reviews from people due to the baby voice. I do think that in the future, people definitely came around to the song and the baby voice. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the baby voice and prefer Cardi to rap in his natural tone. I mean, but I'm not saying that as pertaining to Flatbed Freestyle because I really love that song. Definitely a top five song to me when it comes to Dilit. In an interview with Hot 97 in 2018, Cardi would say that Flatbed Freestyle was his favorite song on the album. What I never knew about the song is that Flatbed in the title of the song is said to be a reference to the Zone 3 area of Atlanta, which Cardi represents. No Time featuring Gunna would come after this, and I really love this song from the album. Both Cardi and Gunna slid on the beat, and I'm not gonna lie, Gunna and Cardi have really good chemistry together. They've collaborated on songs like Monday Through Sunday, YSL, and Sam Young. Sadly, with what's going on with Gunna right now, I have no clue about the possibility of Cardi and Gunna ever collabing again. Another hard track from Dilit is Middle of the Summer featuring Red Coldhearted. Just like Gunna, I feel like Red and Cardi have really good chemistry. I feel like they both complement each other really well and this was confirmed to me when I heard their highly anticipated leak She Might aka Red from the whole lot of Red version 1 era. Originally, instead of Red Coldhearted, there was supposed to be another rapper on the track which was Cap G. A version of the song was previewed by Cap G but he would be replaced like I mentioned. I've never heard his verse on the beat and no disrespect to him at all because I like Cap G. I remember when my brother first put me on a Cap G way back in the day. But I feel like Red Coldhearted really slid on that beat on the final version of the song on the album and I cannot imagine the song without her on it. Something about this song that I never put together is that it samples the song Let It Go which appeared on self-titled. I never really put that together but after learning that I cannot unhear it. The third to last song on the album is Chopper Won't Miss featuring Young Thug. Once again, this was produced by Pierre. He would initially rap over this beat with fans referring to his version of the song as I'm Up. This is obviously before he gave the song to Cardi and the song would become Chopper Won't Miss. According to the Genius page for this song, Chopper Won't Miss was recorded during the same session as Ain't Rockin' Gold, which is an unreleased song between Cardi and Young Thug. The second to last song on the album is R.P. Fredo, featuring Young Nudie, which is in dedication to the late Chicago legend Fredo Santana. Fredo Santana would pass away in 2018, months before the release of Dilit. 
Fredo, just like Chief Keef, was a huge inspiration to Cardi. Fredo's death really hit Cardi with this being very evident with the video of Cardi crying at a show when he was performing long time intro. This is what Playbook Cardi had to say about Fredo. That was my brother from another mother. When I was with Rocky, I was with Fredo. Matter of fact, I lived with Fredo and I would leave Fredo's house to go see Rocky. And all that was just yams. I used to follow yams if there was something to see. Fredo was very supportive of me from the jump. I can't lie, I miss him so much. He was so supportive, one of the nicest people I ever met in my life. He's a savage, don't get me wrong, but he really took me in. People don't do that. You don't meet people like that. The last time I saw him, he was telling me how proud he was of me, and I was just like, thank you, bro, I got you. This would not be the only RP song, with Cardi notably making songs like RP Peep for Lil Peep and RP Yams for ASAP Yams. Speaking of RP Peep, this song uses the same beat as RP Fredo, but the lyrics are different and has no nudie feature. I think it's safe to say that I prefer RP Fredo because I really like what nudie adds to the track. The last track on the album is Top, and if you can't tell about what I said about the track earlier, I do not like the song at all. I feel like the album could have gone without it in my opinion. This pretty much wraps up this phenomenal album, one of my favorite albums of all time. Like I said earlier, definitely let me know if you would like to see a video on Whole Lot of Red, but all in all, let me know what you guys thought of the video. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.